Iceland is the sea most sea. amazing place to go to because they, they tap into the geothermal energy of it. Prof Lev, you've been up to the power plants up there. Yeah, you take a, you take a long hot shower in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, well, they problem. have those, they have the springs, but they don't, you know, and like in Yellowstone and others, there's all sorts of con people control. Yeah. <laughs> Iceland, you know, all these German tourists, is <laughs> all yeah, that. Right. I but mean, you can find all sorts of of streams that are that are really warm you can sit in right, oh yeah beautiful streams and they have some of them that they have those uh, midgens of flies there that they have a, that are so intense that they become the fertilizer and feeding oh my god for wow. the fish yeah huh. wow that star is <laughs> hanging on tight i think he's eating yeah, he's hanging ready, on. Yeah. About to I wonder climb if he's up. going up or he just came down. I don't see any polyps. I think he's right probably there. done the job, it looks like. <laughs> Slid down the pole after dinner. <laughs> this one's definitely bamboo. There's yeah, someone up at the top. There. No, he hasn't. Maybe he's going to make the ascent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. All right, thank it's you. like someone with an orange glove. No, he, yeah, he's going to. Have lunch. <laughs> well, see, I can lay in my room and watch this on the TV with my pillow. That's what I, that's, I jumped out of bed actually when I was watching <laughs> it. Because I can just lay there and watch it too. Hmm. Yeah, ho well, hopefully we, you come up when you're excited. Not well, what I do is, <laughs> well, that's what I did. <laughs> but it's, you know, you can be in bed and just open your eye and go, no, I'm not going up. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, look at that puppy. It's an anemone that's all closed It's already up. closed down. It looks Ooh. like it closed down on something, right? Yeah. Very cool. Looks like a fig. <laughs> I feel like, like that's maybe the there. biggest anemone you've Seen yeah. oh, I've seen yeah some monsters. Looks like it's closed in on something. Yeah, yeah it could be that it's unhappy could with. Push on in there, but there's. Is it eating a starfish or what? Yeah, oh. uh, Can't tell what that is on the inside. It might just be part of it. That's the center of the anemone. Could be. Yeah. But it's, it's closed down. Only its mother could love it, I gotta <laughs> say. It's <laughs> a really good zoom, though, on the texture. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, it almost looks beautiful. like an abalone on the side. Oops, there you go. Wow. One of our viewers is asking how long this dive is expected to go for, and this was expected to be at least a 24-hour dive. Yeah, I think uh, 10 to... 12 local, I think, is the lighter. plan. But, uh, you know, there's no gun to our head to leave. We can stay down as long as we like. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a ways to go to get to the top of this thing, so uh, we're yeah. going to... Truck try. on. Yep. We've done, I think, the, some of the longest lowerings we've done are th three days or something. Yeah. I mean, we can stay down indefinitely, but you finally reach the top of the mountain and... Yeah, and run out of sample just space. Once you summit, I still think you should use elevators and just send the samples. If it's there. Agreed. Yeah. Throw dropped. some throw some sensors on the elevator and well, have we it do be it. a lander. Yeah. Well, it's just a lander. You track it on the way down. We built one once where you could change the vanes on it. Oh, to direct and, and it and fly it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That was fun. That's a nice idea. Well, we did it. You know, it's funny how people just, we lose corporate memory. We've been using elevators for 30 years. We so use them a lot more than we do now. I remember we, um, Bob Hessler and yep. Ken Smith. Ken was at uh, Woods Hole then. I think he ended up at Scripps. Bob Hessler was at Scripps. And they developed these bell jar respirometers mm -hmm. where they would we'd go down with Alvin and we would literally place this respirometer over the animals uh -huh. and do all their uh, medical.
metabolic uptakes and everything in situ mm -hmm. huh. uh, and make the measurements on the animal as it's laying on the bottom. Oh. That was cool. That's cool. We had uh, something similar. Oh, yeah, it was for, right? yeah, for collecting uh, or measuring the methane that was coming out around these clumps of tube worms. But uh, we did find that it got a little hot for the for the tube worms under the jar. Yeah. <laughs> we had to take it off because they were you're, looking you're, you're a bit peaked. Yeah. yeah, they were going from red to orange. Oh. Scott oh. Uncle was very excited about that. <laughs> well, uh, Jim Childress at UCSB would had a you know a, a pressure aquarium. Right. Someone was asking us yeah, about. Yeah, that was a question this morning on our. That watch. was Jim Childress. In fact, Peter Gerges was a student. Oh, right, and he's got some of those same yeah. vessels. Yeah. And you, yeah, you were able to bring them up and keep them alive at pressure. Yeah. And temperature. In his labs for quite a while, he uh, obviously the mollusks were the easiest to keep alive. Right. Than the two worms, but you know we had the giant clams and mussels and. Yeah, he uh, was able to keep him alive for a while. Does it still look pretty flat out ahead of us? Yeah, lots more of this. Yeah, it yeah. looks pretty flat on the Micro nodules. Sonar. Yeah, the sonar is nothing. Thanks to our viewers for tuning in. Feel free to send your questions in the chat. So you took a core sample. It'd be, like you say, it'd be very interesting. Uh, it's There's something, one of the big anomalies has always been about nodules is how they've been able to escape burial. Mm -hmm. And there was some paper written, and I can't remember, of how they don't get buried. Right. And it's almost like they're a living creature. But it's some phenomena of precipitation. Well, yeah, we I think maybe try to push in next time we find a big sediment patch that doesn't have any. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That there are any. In yeah. There collect within one. Like right. 15 centimeters, anyway. Yeah, you see it. It's definitely at the edges of of features. You get some uh, edges of kind of like rock ledges. You get some clear sediment, and then out oh the yeah, middle. you can see the the clear sediments are in the lowest spot. Sometimes it was the opposite. Like in the last expedition, we were seeing under the ledges, we were seeing nodule patches. See that sort of ravine coming yeah, yeah. down. And then up on the plateau, you have the nodules. So it's the sediments tend to be at the lowest, like the, the channel, the river channel. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's where they're moving down slope. Mm. It's sort of a dendritic drainage pattern. Yeah, I think that the paper you're mentioning about the nodules staying on top had to do with them being much larger than the grain size of right, the, right. the sediment. So it filters down and they they don't. Yeah. It's the same process for desert pavement. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting when we were finding ancient shipwrecks in the Mediterranean, you'd have these amphora in a, in a pit. And we were sort of curious they were in a pit until we discovered that the crabs made sure they were. Oh. Uh, and so they, the crabs needed them for protection. So the last thing they wanted them to do is get buried. Right. So they were constantly excavating. Oh, interesting. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then we had the fish were li literally, and eels were living inside the emperor. Hmm. And in the med, you know, they put down little pots on a string, like a lobster pot. Yeah. And the octopus go in them. That's how they catch the octopus. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they have to put anything in the pot, or it just it, wants to go in? It lives in the pot. Oh. Mm. And, you know, when you bring him up, the last thing he's going to do is leave the pot. All right. You know how they catch monkeys in Africa? They take a, a log, a hollow log, cut a hole in it, put a banana in there, and the monkey will reach in and not let go. Oh, really? And you, even <laughs> when you come up to it, it will scream and yell, but it will not let go of that banana. Oh, my God. <laughs> sort of crazy. But, yeah, it's interesting to watch, particularly out in areas which were no micro topography, no place to hide, mm -hmm. how they use amphorases and octopus and crabs and others. It's 
Holmes. Hmm. A lot of people have asked what's the most unusual thing that that we all have seen on the C4. Guessing it, you might have the best story. I don't know what <laughs> it is. Though. Well, I mean, clearly seeing a 13-foot tube worm was quite a... Oh, I wow. agree. <laughs> yeah. That, that, was, was cool. that was fun. We were standing out on deck holding that thing. Yeah, we collected. <laughs> it was 13 feet long. Wow. wow. Yeah. But the, as you know, the worm isn't 13 feet. It builds the tube uh, in competition with the other animals. To the get worm higher. itself yeah. is always pretty much the same length. Uh, but they build sections. Right. And they move up into a new section uh -huh. as they're trying to stay in the flow. Right. Of, of the nutrient-rich water. So, yeah, thir it was 13 feet long. Is the 13-footer from the Galapagos? Yeah, it was from the wow. Galapagos. How did you guys preserve that again? It Was it in a... Well, like you say, you oh. take... Oh. The worm is like this. You take the worm out, and, it, and the tube itself is, you know, really easy to preserve. It's, it's like you just dry it out. It's like a I think we filled it with nail. kitty litter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, we, what we, is it made of? The I outside? It's like fingernail material. Well, it's yeah, it's very. Oh. Um, like I'm trying to remember the yeah. term. Okay. Chitin or is yeah, it? it's like a it's like a garden hose almost. Yeah, I'll oh, still okay. uh, Bob, I'll still never forgive you for when you put the back of the hose in it and then <laughs> just we just sprayed the the good the guts <laughs> and all of the stew were all. <laughs> 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 It was uh, funny though, yeah. We could try to get it out, but it was one of them <laughs> ended up being deceased, if I remember right. Yeah, that was funny, fun times. <laughs> but my favorite critter is the hooded octopod, Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> I first saw that at I was in the Trieste in twenty thousand feet of water, and they came and dropped. Huh. Wow. And I just cute like a pink Dumbo with a big. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just we like saw one favorite. on this uh in the argus cam oh. it was uh kind of bobbing up and down or one, argus on, early, on the first dive we saw no on earlier today mm -hmm. i mean oh, i don't think, i'm not sure anyone else saw it yeah other than me kind of looking at it for just a moment but huh. uh, we, were, like, we were eating lunch right we were yeah lunch. well yesterday oh. we saw one because it was we i thought it was a squid but it was solo. Yeah. And, you know, squids aren't solo, and the oc hooded octopods are, are. Yeah, yeah. Solo. But they're cute as a bug in a rug. <laughs> One of our viewers wants to know what the pink blob was that we passed and ignored. And oh. they're assuming we've probably already I seen that before. I think it was the whole Ethereum. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sea cucumber, yeah. It was a sea we, cucumber. And we have collected quite a few on our watch. I was just noticing when we were coming across the flats, you could see an area where uh, holotherians had grazed and had all yeah, these had tracks a beautiful all over uh -huh. the map. Looked yeah. like a maze. Yeah. But did you see that one yesterday? It was jet black. Huh. I have yeah. never seen a jet black holotherian. Yeah, it was absolutely yeah. black. There's been a lot of variety of yeah. holotherians. Yeah. So what's, what is this summit height? You know, what do we summit at? 18. 22 something. Uh, it's in the 1800s, 1846. -ish. Okay, we'll get up there. Maybe get more marine life. Is that it? That's it right there? That's the summit? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. There's yeah. kind of a dual summit on this uh, yeah. seamount. Yeah, that's right. There's well, that. if each seamount we climb, we climb at a different part of the clock, you'll be able to add it all up. Yeah, it's it's so the key super is to different. Have, yeah, have make sure every ascent is at a different part of the clock. Yeah, so you because it looks like these these are ubiquitous. I mean, they, they look like they're going to be all the same. Yeah, I think you're right. And so it might as well uh, treat them as one and come up different sides of them to see if you get variation in the thickness of the of the of the errors. Yeah, the crust and the sediments. Yeah, yeah. see if there's some magic chemistry 
Now, uh, where's your, what's your oxygen level? 24, so what is it? Uh, right here, it's, yeah, 24, 24 to 25, right here, yeah. and over... What are the units, percent? Uh, that's oh, oxygen millimoles saturation. Percent. What is that, millimoles? In, in terms of, yeah, millimoles per liter, it yeah. is uh, right around 87. But over... Well, normally the oh. oxygen minimum is, what, at 800 meters? What is the oxygen minimum? Yeah, that's right. So, so we're way below that. Oh, In this case, it was at, yeah, around 900 meters. Yeah. And since we started on bottom, concentration's gone from over 100 down to, you know, 80-something. You know, when I was went on my first cruise, uh, on a Scripps cruise, I was 17. It was 1959. And I was doing the uh, Nansen casts mm -hmm. in the hero's bucket. They put me, you know, because you just get toasted by the waves. And they're handing you out uh, the Nansen bottles out of the hydro cab on the port side. And you're in the hero bucket. And the and the cable comes down right next to you. We were doing casts, and naturally, we were initially we were doing shallow water casts, and you have to titrate and 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 do the uh, oxygen mm -hmm. titrations immediately once you pulled them out of the bottle, and you would see that drop in in oxygen. And it was Forbes, I think it was his name, in the 1800s. It said, well. It'll extrapolate to zero, and there will be no life in the deep sea. And then we did a deep water cast, and it went down, and then it went back up. Mm -hmm. And I remember the scientist aboard asking me why, and I had no idea why, until you learned that it was Antarctic bottom water that was coming down, well oxygenated, but at very cold temperature, mm -hmm. bringing that oxygen in. Someone did a calculation of how long it took to get the oxygen to the Galapagos Rift, and it was like 200 years or something yeah. to get oh. the oxygen circulating. So it was good oxygen. It was just old. <laughs> <laughs> but that was crazy. Probably uh, better oxygen. Yeah. But I remember that we would tow these net tows, you know, and you're taking, you know, thousands of delicate, gelatinous, critters and squashing them mm -hmm. into a big pile of goo and then looking under the microscope and saying, what am I looking at? Yeah, right. It was the caught end of, of, the, of the toe, but the, yeah, that was that was an interesting summer. Yeah, I was up on a ship in the Arctic and we did a, a net toe and got so many Quit shrimp. There, Dave? What, a krill. Yeah. yeah, but bigger not big enough to eat. Eat. Yeah. yeah well, sh you should have done it. That's pretty white. I didn't realize that the militaris were black corals. So oh. right now. Oh, they are. I didn't know that. The black corals that aren't. <laughs> yeah, some it's harder to see that black color in them than others. Remula Gorgia, Remula Gorgia, is that right? Mil Militaris? Remula Gorgia, um, Militaris. I don't remember. And that's that little brown guy up there. Yeah. That would make sense because we were the seeing it so deep and yeah, black corals last sense. longer. All right, come on. Oh, from the shore, that's not a black coral. Okay, it's not. Got it. Why does it look like a black coral? All right. One of our viewers is wondering if someone can talk about uh, adaptations the organisms that live at this depth have to survive here. I don't know. What so, uh, what adaptations they have to survive at these depths? Yeah, at yeah. To, or in this environmental condition, since there isn't a whole lot of life here. Yeah, so... Um, one of the things for, for some of the corals, they 
make skeletons out of aragonite, which doesn't dissolve as easily as calcium carbonate at this depth. Some make their skeletons out of a protein that uh, is more flexible and also doesn't dissolve. And then a lot of the animals that live down here are adapted to uh, you know, low, low amounts of food, right? So they uh, grow slowly and uh, live life in the slow lane. All right, we'll see you again soon. Been pretty gentle slope here for a bit. It'll be interesting to plot up the depth plus altitude profile from this dive and see how it compares to the bathymetry. Yeah. A lot different. Actually, let's see if we can, uh, on this Herc and Argus depth, on my high pack. See if we can All right, let's last. not ignore these holotropes. <laughs> <laughs> they were waiting they for their time. Adoring oh, fans. Yeah. 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 Sure. And there are two of them. There it is, Adam, up on the on the high pack that depth. Oh yeah. Actually, pretty steady. So what's the current depth relative to the map? Oh, you mean you're talking about that? Oh, um, I can't query depth on this. Uh. Oh, there's another one. Does someone have a microphone? A uh, speaker on? In here? Speaker? Speaker. Oh, on Bob there. does. There we go. I thought I kept hearing my voice in the. <laughs> Is that better? Check, check, check. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. Oh, now I've got it too. I keep hearing Rennie's voice. <laughs> Can't take you seriously back there with your back <laughs> backwards <laughs> hat. Ramula gorgia is a pleurogorgia. Pleurogorgia. And okay. is an octocoral. So it's not a black coral. Huh, it looked quite black to me. Ramula gorgia is a pleurogorgia? I think it needs to decide. Yeah. And a chrysogorgia. It's a chrysogorgia? That's what its chat says. Dude, so when I, f what? I said it was chrysogorgia when we first saw it, and someone's was like, no, <laughs> it's a Romulogorgia mili militaris. <laughs> they were just more specific. I mean, Thinking about that for days now. <laughs> Big whoop. Oh boy. Since it happened two minutes ago. One of our viewers is asking if the watches, the watch teams ever mix up on dives, or is it typical to stay together as a team throughout an expedition? I don't, from my experience, pretty much stick together. But I guess if. You know, what, one thing that could happen is someone needs some relief because maybe they got to process some samples in the lab and someone would step in for them or someone, you know, doesn't feel well. Someone can yeah. kind of fill in. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I think we're stuck with each Weird. other. It'd be hard to change it up once you get on your sleep schedule. Oh, auto heading came yeah, up. Yeah, I think during an expedition, largely it doesn't change, but between. It, I was wondering what up. happened. <laughs> Okay, so it was Puta Gorgia, and they changed it to Ramula Gorgia. <laughs> so it's not trying to be both. You know? it's good. I'm sticking with Militaris. What's that? I'm sticking with Militaris. Militaris, yeah. Here's another sea life question. Life on the ship. 
How much uh, time do you get to do what you want to do, including sleep time or downtime? Okay, yeah, so it might, the question might be go how up, much so. time do you <laughs> have that you get to choose exactly what you're doing? Because I would say doing this is what I want to be doing. Yeah. Um, but so you got four hours on and eight hours off. So, um, go on that cycle every 12 hours. So, typically, people will take one of those eight hour chunks and sleep at least some of it. And the other one will, you know, do the things you need to do. Uh, whether it's look at samples or process some data or watch a movie or read a book. The gym is very popular at the beginning of the cruise <laughs> <laughs> and you have to sign up you can't just walk into the gym you got to have your time i don't know if there is there is every time slot taken in the gym no there's some open ones yeah i think I it's I snagged that was mostly spot for, for tomorrow. covid protocols <laughs> we never well, used to have to sign up for that oh really oh that's a COVID. yeah And one thing that's kind of interesting, even if you're in a room with four people, if there are three other people, a lot of people are on a different watch schedule. So there might be somebody sleeping at any given time of the day in that room. Yeah, rooms are definitely the quiet space. Yeah, yeah. it's important not to let doors slam and stuff like that. But there are places where you can go to kind of read or enjoy a little sun up on the monkey deck, bird watching. Was that over there to the right? Adam, we have a question about the sediment. Mm -hmm. what, what causes it to accumulate here when other areas are just rock without that overlying loose sediment? Yeah, so the sediment is, for the most part, settling down from the upper ocean, but it's also being carried along by currents. And so as it comes down, it gets pushed around by the currents. It's going to find low spots where the currents slow down and allow it to settle out. Uh, on our first dive, we're on a different side of the seamount. We're kind of coming up the east side. And we saw very little sediment, or, or at least never enough to kind of take a push core. So it was all very thin. And on this dive, we've seen lots and lots of sediment. So. We don't know yet if that's a case of being on different sides relative to the prevailing currents. Want to um, push in on this guy for a second? But we are going to kind of check that out as we continue to explore these uh, unnamed seamounts. He's, um, looks hungry, not very full. <laughs> All right, come on. Thanks. We had a question about who was here just a minute ago for conversation. That was Dr. Bob Ballard, who joined us for a little while. He's telling stories this many years at sea and exploring.
That's another Holothurian, one of these dark, deep purple ones. Some more of that very dark uh, sponge stalks. Some more Ramula Gorgia. Oh, do we want a close up of these guys? This guy right here? Sure, since we're since we're standing by here. Sure. Alright. Get a tight zoom on that thing. seen a lot of the associate animals. Can you uh, pan down a little bit? There was sure. apparently something white. See if I can set down. Can you come wide just a little bit, Dave? I'll just go set up here. Yeah. Back, back out a little bit. I think it was below the porch. What are you on the hunt there for, Adam? Something white. Uh, All right, zoom in there. You, uh, I think it's out of frame, right? Out of frame, yeah. So is it? We're getting in. Oh, it's out of frame. Chat. Yeah. This is yeah, something maybe okay. go wide. I'm full wide. Where? I'm not sure, but we'll see. Mm. Never mind. All right. Oh, go zoom out ahead, so we'll put some time in the bank. Time in the bank. Time in the bank. Question for ROV pilots. Is there a camera setup that would allow you to look for bioluminescence while we're exploring? Or maybe video, maybe both. They're not currently on board, um, but there has been attempts. No, okay, sorry, let me go back. Um, Brennan Phillips over at URI at um, University of Rhode Island had made a low light camera and with the intention of catching this type of um, bioluminescence events. Wow. And so that required also a strobe setup, if I, if I remember correctly, it was a strobe setup and then his low light cameras. Uh, and you can excite kind of the, the bioluminescence of these organisms, whatever organisms have bioluminescence down here. 
Um, but we currently don't have a low light camera like that installed. You used to like have to turn the lights out too on the vehicles, right? To do some of that, yeah. yeah. Which is also concerning. yeah. So <laughs> that, that that said, when you're in the in the midwater on ascent or descent, uh, you'll see bioluminescent uh, uh, animals, and uh, these cameras will pick that up. It depends on the ambient light levels in the background. Uh, mm -hmm. Something down here against the uh, uh, against the sea bottom where it's we're relatively light, and we've got a large pool of light out in front of us. Uh, like you see uh, on the Argus cam, when you look down on Herc, we've got a pretty large pool of light out there. So it, it kind of wipes out anything that you might see. But uh, in the midwater with, uh, with uh, maybe fewer lights on, uh, we do see bioluminescent and stuff. Squid, uh, yeah. all kinds of jellyfish, um, those kinds of things. Cool. Yeah, I think if I remember right, when Brennan was using those low light cameras, we had to we had to turn everything off and uh, on all the lights on the vehicles, including there's a blue LED on the junction box. <laughs> uh -huh. to put, it wasn't fully covered. It put, just put electrical tape over that patch of the junction wow. box. Wow, that's how dark it had to be. That's crazy. And then, um, yeah, it, it even came down to there was a red LED in the housing or something, that mm. was the actual camera. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard to fly like that? Well, I, uh, well, I think that was for Midwater, wasn't it, for him? They were actually, we were piping the low-light camera up. So when we have, there's a video, if viewers want to look at the uh, vampire squid. Um, that was flown with the lights shut off, and we were using the low-light camera to fly around. It was in a different position, so the Her mm -hmm. Hercules pilot had to think, okay, my eye is no longer where my eye is. It's down by the porch or something. <laughs> and same with the um, uh, deep staria jelly was midwater, and that was a, a midwater oh. fly with the low light camera and like zero context. So that was wow, that's cool. The deep staria is a gorgeous, very gorgeous capture. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think that was. I was on with Greg for that one. Does Greg still pilot? Yeah, he was just out earlier this year for Ocean Networks Canada. It's interesting we're seeing all these massive sponge stalks. Yeah. But none of the massive sponge sponges with it. I don't think it's always the same kind of sponge too. Not a huge variety anyway. Mm -hmm. Looks like a subsea trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be something called a trumpet sponge, yeah? Well, probably, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably a whole orchestra. What was the one last year? Like the Cheeto sponge or something we called it? Cheeto um, sponge. The, uh, saw it everywhere. Bugle. Bugle sponge. Bugle sponge? Bugle. <laughs> bugle. It looked like a bugle. I like the jump <laughs> like, to Cheeto. <laughs> like the bugle uh, yeah, food. Like a flaming hot Cheeto sponge. <laughs> It's a bright orange. I haven't seen bugles in a really long time. Oh, there might be a Cheeto sponge too. Yeah, I don't think that was like a like an actual name, but no. it stuck. Like it's it. Someone said it. <laughs> the later in the cruise, the more things get named after food items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now all I want is a bag of Cheetos. Right. <laughs> what about a bag of bugles? Ooh. Even better. I'm excited about your Reese's Puffs journey mm. that you'll be uh, <laughs> undertaking. I will report back. Thank you. Is there the bag of Reese's things up there still? They didn't make it. They didn't make it up there? No, they made it, but then they didn't 
Oh, they that was the survive end of the bagged. Oh, I see. Thank you for the thank, thank you. you for the contribution oh, yeah. of to our gastrointestinal tracts. <laughs> thank you. Here's oh wait, you can't have Oreos. Sorry. What happened to our bat situation back here? Rennie, what speed have we been doing these moves at? This has all been at 0 0.2 knots. So it's kind of like standard exploration, uh, but it's been pretty flat. Yeah, I'm wondering if we might. You want me to see? Let, let's see the distance to the peak and what if if we were to go on a straight shot from here to the peak, which is about what we're gonna do. It's, uh, one and a half kilometers which is so at that point two, that would be probably four hours. If we didn't stop and then, uh, oh, that's, that's so reasonable. I know we're going to be collecting a rock and another, another 150 meters vertical. Okay. How about another rock question? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Viewer wants to know, do the samples from the seamount give an idea of how deep the lava came from? Oh, that is an awesome question. That is a good question. So, um, for a lot of submarine erupted basalts, they... Uh, you can tell the pressure that they were erupted at based on how much CO2, carbon dioxide, and water is dissolved in the magma. So eruptions on land usually lose all of their CO2 and water by the time they get to the surface, but the hydrostatic pressure can we zoom at, on that tiny star? at the seafloor yeah. uh, will, will cause some of it to stay in solution. <laughs> And so if we, if, if these rocks contained um, glass, so, so lava that quenched really quickly, trapped those volatiles, then uh, we could determine the... All right, you can zoom there. Very cute. Sorry. Oh. So cute. It's cute, but it looks like it's about to predate whatever yep. the oh. stalk is. Oh. Or maybe it's Patrick, cool. get off that coral. Why is there something <laughs> up above that it's going to eat? Uh, yeah, it's a, like a really thin coral right next to it. Oh. Barely see mm -hmm. it. Are the lasers on? They're just out of, out of frame? I think, yeah, they're just out of frame, the lasers. Okay. So let's talk Thank more you. about dissolved CO2 and water in <laughs> Let's do because one of the things that, that I did ahead, get out ahead. for an eruption, oh, there it is. Uh, sometimes the lava comes up 
or the magma comes up so fast that it retains the water and CO2 that it had at depth uh, in, the, in the crust. And then by watching how uh, it exalves or goes into bubbles over the distance of a flow, we can actually figure out how fast the flow was moving. which is super exciting for me. That was really cool. You can tell all that. So shoot. For those of you who have been on many uh, expeditions, have you ever found other fossilized whale bones? Or was the, scale, the skull that was found in the last expedition an extremely rare occurrence? Last year we found something. Um, we weren't sure what type of mammal it was, though. It was like yeah, this, it was like in, a, in some sort of stone. Yeah, it was really cool. It was like a different substrate around it. And then right, that one piece had like a... A, a lighter stone huh. and it was encasing I mean it looked in place so that's how perfect it was and nothing else was around it whatever it, that yeah. was that sedimentary rock had been eroded, eroded away and except for that one piece and it was a marine mammal of some kind but yeah I don't know if it was a whale I don't know if he sampled like a piece of it yeah yeah we broke off the rib There's also, there's been other uh, whale fossilized whale bones seen in prior expeditions as well. Come in tight on that. Uh, yeah, zoom there. Is that a little shrimp on that thing? I don't know, it's got some really long something coming off of it. Very long whiskers, yeah. Whiskers, I like that. Is it a shrimp? I can't tell. No, that looks like a um, siphonophore, perhaps. Mm -hmm. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, huh. yeah. Or not a siphonophore, but. Cool shot. I think that's a Rosalidae sponge. There's this Ooh. hydroid above it. Oh. Yeah, look at yeah. that. All right, come by again. I gotta catch up. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Our sponge. I'm going to increase the gain a little bit. Yeah, sure thing. So. so we get properly scared by something like that. Ernie, how far have we come for this, uh, for our watch so far? Oh, I'll have to remember. We had just sampled 039, right? 039? I think so, yeah. Okay. Right, right before our watch started, they did. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense.
850 meters. Distance traveled. All right, so we'll hit a K probably before. Yeah. Before we uh, to switch over. That'll be good. It's at the top of this thing. I'm gonna say it's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We've, we've seen a bunch of stalks lying on the ground. Now we're seeing stalks standing up. I think we're coming up. Yeah. So <laughs> Ever the hopeful man, are you? Oh, there's a crab or something. Want to get a zoom yeah. in on that crab? And those soli <laughs> solitary hydroids, it looks like. Maybe? Sure. Or are oh, they... Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> I don't know. That's the good thing about this watch. I, I'm going to believe you. So yeah, <laughs> great. Look at that. A little nice. Grab lobster thing. I don't know. They have like a hard... Tubular hydroids. Tubular hydroids. Yes. Maybe a Chalfiella. Maybe that's the crab thing. I can only guess at how often the biologists ashore are cringing at us. <laughs> yes, yes. Nice, Jake. All right, come back wide. And so I don't get too far behind. They all coordinate. They're like, we're going to need to all be on the 8 to 12. <laughs> so I know then Dr. Ballard comes in and another geologist. <laughs> oh, there's a nice oh, a live spot. one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know much time. Die. Urchin in the bottom. That's my... Do urchins pretty sponges? I don't know. I don't know what there would be to eat. Yeah. Maybe they have a lot of toothpicks, though, for whatever they do eat. Yeah. I liked it, Jess. I, I think you should have gotten more for that. Sorry? I think you should have gotten more for that. I like it. <laughs> I, I thought so, too, but apparently not. <laughs> I'm with you. Thank you, Dave. Toothpicks. Oh, they're spines. I get it. <laughs> the pity laughter is not accepted. <laughs> you kind of see like the cool line strike there on yeah. Argus view. This, that's kind of neat. There's three different textures here. The bare sand. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what is real rock underneath this. You know, like these flat areas at the top of the screen. Is that crust on lava or is that just these little nodules that have merged together? Hmm. So what is uh, 
work speed relative to walking speed? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, point two, two knots. knots. So, yeah. A knot is 1.8 kilometers. 1.1 mile per hour. 1.1, yeah, it's almost one mile an hour. One mile an hour. It's kind of a, a saunter. <laughs> How fast do you walk? Like two miles an hour? I don't know. Walk like... Oh, four miles an hour, right? Yeah. Four miles an hour. What about those Olympic speed walkers? I mean, they can... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, get up there a bit. so interesting. Her can do a couple knots. What? Full yeah. jam? Well, yeah. Full jam, maybe, yeah. Uh, a couple All knots. All the beans? Maybe like one yeah. knot, I would assume. No, I, can go, yeah, I thought fast. it was like max yeah. speed two knots or something. Might be, yeah. Uh, Under tow? Uh, usually, so we'll we'll try to like, because towing is kind of boring, if it's <laughs> flat enough, then we'll just try to drive it. Mm -hmm. So Argus will just be like flying and Herc's driving. Mm -hmm. We've gotten pretty fast before. The average walking speed, according to healthline.com, is three to four miles per hour. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think I'm well below that, though. One time a ship I was on lost one of its Z drives or big propellers, so we had to limp back to port at like six knots, oh, <laughs> which wow. I determined was the speed of a mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you had a lot of time to figure that out. <laughs> Andy had to they had to hand steer all the way back as oh, well, so man. they were offering like candy bars if you would come up and put your hand <laughs> on the yeah. <laughs> for a while. Oh, interesting. Who wants a marine biology question? Rennie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rennie. Rennie's a resident least. biologist. That's One of our viewers wants to know, there. does each species of sea star uh, predate on a specific species of coral? I don't think so. I think that there is typically some of the associates of the coral and sponges are like a shrimp will be particularly associated with a particular sponge and a brittle star will be associated with a particular coral. One of the ones that keeps coming up is Metallogorgia and a specific brittle star that's associated with that. Um, but I, I think that sea stars are a little less discriminant as long as it's food. Mm -hmm. But this is coming from a non-biologist <laughs> who may have heard this information in the past. <laughs> Disclaimer, really. Back to rock questions. One of our mm -hmm. viewers wants to know, do the smaller rocks mean that there's more water current? Um, not in this instance. Right here, the smaller rocks kind of are, are created by the precipitation of these iron and manganese crusts. And so they kind of formed in place, and they, they basically start as little baby rocks and get bigger over time. And so we're seeing um, small ones here because they're forming on on sediment uh, rather than coating the coating a bigger rock. Want to push in on this sponge? Where is that? So, uh, one of the scientists from shore noted that uh, we saw a benthic tenophore. Oh yeah, that would be the one that I said was a siphonophore and it wasn't. Right, so is that another one of them? That little orange doohickey? Because they said it might be worth collecting if oh. it's easy. 